Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are looking to become coders and you're trying to get into the industry, maybe you don't want to go to computer science school uh, full-time, four-year degree, you can look at a bootcamp. They're actually geared towards getting beginner developers the skills that they need to get hired in the industry as a junior developer where you would then work your way up. So it's a lot cheaper than college. If you guys are interested, make sure you check them out. The link is in the description tab below. All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about web developer trends that are right now. So in 2018, at the time of this video, I just tried to come up, to, to come up with a list of things that I feel like are somewhat new to the web development world that I would be able to tell, you know, junior developers that are just getting started now. So if they start focusing on it now, especially if they're not even in the industry yet, they can get like a, a head start on, on guys like us that are in the industry because we don't have as much time, obviously, to learn and things like that. We have to learn stuff that is required for our jobs and all that stuff. And a lot of this new stuff is not required. It's fun to play with, but like we just don't have a ton of time. So as a junior developer in, in IT in general, like you always have this ability to hit, like, hit and jump in on the ground level. So that's what this video is about. So in the, in the coming future, and really this, this extends into 2019, you know, we can write ES6, ES7, ES8. You can write it right now. You can use Babel or TypeScript. And then I was going to say, like, don't use something like CoffeeScript. It should either boil down to Babel or TypeScript. So if you're going to use Babel, uh, it brings up the next point, which static type checking in JavaScript is a real thing. It's why TypeScript is so popular right now. And it's why the Flow project was created and tacked on to the Babel project to, br pr uh, to bring static type checking to your JavaScript code. So that that is going to continue... You definitely should write in modern JavaScript and write in a type safe manner uh, because that's the way all JavaScript's going to be written going forward. All right, so progressive web apps, um, those are still a thing. Um, and I say still a thing, they're actually bigger now than they've ever been. But uh, basically, it adds the ability for you to be able to install a web app uh, onto a user's phone so they can essentially get the, you know, the app icon on their phone. But it's all just working through HTTP, all through, through a regular browser doesn't have quite the performance of a native application, obviously, but uh, the amount of time it saves you by being able to write your code in a uh, a web you know a web friendly way um, that works on a browser is 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 very beneficial. So client side view frameworks are going to continue to dominate. Everything is all about you know React, Vue, Angular, some sort of template engine that is uh, that is in your MVC stack, MVC model view controller. Things like uh, Vue, you know, they're focusing just on that 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 Vue portion of the MVC pattern. Although there are tools and things that you can end up bringing in for full scale web framework type experience with like you know page routing and things like that. So you're going to continue to see that. I don't think that I would recommend that you guys learn all three of them. If you're brand new to web development, I would definitely choose Vue. If you have a lot of JavaScript experience, I would probably choose React. I think React is going to be more popular in the corporate world. I think Vue is going to be like a very jQuery like um, a very jQuery like thing for client side web frameworks. So Node is still huge, single threaded, threaded, fully async, you know, to its core. Uh, you can write server code in JavaScript. That says a lot. Node's been around for a long time. It's still going to be huge. It's still going to take portions of the web away from uh, things like PHP, Python, and probably even other stacks like .NET and things like that. So it's all about microservices. Microservices are basically uh, small APIs. So basically your architecture consists of a bunch of separate API projects as opposed to one monolithic API that you have to update uh, and worry about backwards compatibility and all that stuff. Like it's just being able to move a, a humongous API is much more difficult than obviously a smaller one. So frameworks and architectures are now being designed for a bunch of RESTful individual API endpoints, uh, individual projects that are handling different pieces. Um, and it all just speaks the language of the web, right? You're making RESTful calls via HTTP. Browsers understand it. They work cross-platform. And that's why microservices combined with a Vue-type framework uh, like Vue or, or React or something are going to be huge, really huge. If there's really any takeaway to this video, it should be about choosing one of those cl client-side Vue frameworks and then um, you know dealing with uh, microservices written in something like Node or Python or PHP or something. Hybrid apps are going to be popular. Hybrid apps um, include things like React Native, Xamarin, Google's Flutter project. They allow you to basically write once and deploy to different operating systems. I know that that's the, 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 the idea behind all of them, and they never work that way, but um, they, they are close to native performance, not quite native. 
the benefit is that, like for Xamarin, you, you can write your, all your mobile apps in C Sharp. We know that Microsoft doesn't have any sort of domination in the mobile app industry. So C Sharp developers, there's a lot of them. They can use C Sharp to write complicated modern web apps. React Native allows you to write complicated modern web apps uh, in, in JavaScript using the React architectural pattern. And then Google's uh, Flutter project uh, does the same thing. So CSS, HTML, JavaScript, and jQuery are all still a thing. You need to know all of them. CSS3, obviously, is not a new thing anymore. I mean, we're starting to get into like 4.0 kind of features. Um, obviously, you need to know HTML. You can spend just a couple days on that probably to get up to speed enough to be a decent web developer. Not a decent web developer, but enough to start playing around with web development. Um, jQuery, you must still know this. It's still used across all major websites. Um, a lot of major corporations obviously still using it. If you don't know how to use jQuery, that's a problem in the workplace. Version control. So I definitely recommend that newbies, you know, they reach out, use something like Git or TFS. That means that um, ideally you should be able to know what version control is, how to do a, p a push, a commit, all that stuff. I have tutorials on Git if you guys are interested. Um, also, and that means like you should be able to go to GitHub, know how to clone a project, know how to push data, uh, code to a project. Uh, must know version control. All right, material design. This is obviously a design language created by Google. It's been around for a while actually, but um, starting to become more popular because like material design is now ported over to like things like uh, there's like a React material design. So it, it's a mobile friendly, mobile first design approach to buttons, to layouts, to fonts, and everything. And it just uh, it just works, and it, it provides a very nice uh, nice experience for people. And you don't have to write all the CSS and JavaScript that makes it work. It, it you just have to uh, know how to use it. WebGL WebGL has been around for a long time as well, but it, it's what has brought modern capabilities of 3D rendering, uh, even being being able to communicate with the graphics card via the the browser. WebGL technology made that pop uh, possible. It was a spinoff of the OpenGL port because really it comes down to two graphics engines for games. You have uh, Direct 3D, right, which was Microsoft's thing, and then OpenGL. Uh, and then WebGL is like basically very close to the OpenGL specification. But it's going to allow 3D graphics. Um, UDT Engine already allows you to build your games in WebGL and stuff, so that's going to continue to get more popular. That also brings me to my next point, which is WebAssembly. So WebAssembly br brings... Uh, near native speed of like C++ type speed, a very, you know, very fast memory managed speed um, that runs inside the browser. So it's all this bytecode stuff. There's like a, a WASM compiler. There's all, it, it's a very complicated thing. Some of the biggest companies in the industry are behind developing WebAssembly right now. But if you were able to get in on the ground floor, it's not going to be easy for you at all. But there's going to be huge demand for WebAssembly in the future, I think. All right, there's going to be more push towards Azure and AWS. More smaller shops are going to move away from things like PHP and WordPress and stuff. Probably going to want to start hosting their, their business solutions inside of uh, a very major platform like Azure or AWS that gives you the ability to scale massively at the push of a button. Serverless tech is going to continue to be popular. We see serverless uh, technology cropping up all over the place, written in Go and Rust and, um, and, and Node and all kinds of stuff. And it, it basically, it's, it's just... It's simple websites that don't need database connections. You don't need MVC patterns. Um, you're just basically returning HTML. And, um, and there's frameworks that allow you to generate that HTML much easier. So that's really where that serverless tech is coming from. And it's something that like, we should have always known about, but it's only becoming popular now because it's like we're, we've seen so much of the headache of JavaScript fatigue and how involved some of these projects and things are. And like, Many times people are using you know, React for basic CRUD applications when they probably should have just used a, a serverless technology. But anyway, that's, uh, that's why we're going to continue to see that because a lot of websites just don't need the complication that we're adding to them. So NoSQL and um, SQL will still be something that you need to be familiar with as a developer. You don't have to be a raw SQL expert. A lot of frameworks, whether it's .NET, you're going to use something like Entity Framework, which is just a, a, a complicated ORM which stands for Object Relational Mapper, but it's writing the SQL code that you need, but you need to understand how that works. Django has its own built-in ORM. Uh, there's ORMs available from NoSQL as well using MongoDB on something like Node.js. So, uh, you know, you got to be familiar with that stuff. AMPs die, please, this is my last one on here. So I'm just basically saying I hate accelerated mobile pages. I hope they die off. I don't like having to design for them or to build for them. I think it's a shitty user experience. I know that they're built with user experience in mind, so I guess like I'm not seeing the big picture there, but I just don't like them. Anyway, I hope they die. All right, guys, that's really all I got. So let me know what you think. Um, let me know what I missed, and make sure you leave comments so that other people can see them. 
All right, thanks, guys. Bye.